These are people in the hospital, in the ICU, is the very bottom uh, piece of that graph. Those are the actual numbers uh, today. And we have about 420 or so in the hospital across the state of Oklahoma. That number, the significance of that number, it stayed flat for the last 17 days. Our Thank you uh, for joining me today. I'm here with uh, Secretary Jerome Lothridge and Secretary Casey Trum uh, to give you an update on our fight against COVID-19. You know, first off, our curve is flattening in Oklahoma, and I am so proud of the job that Oklahomans are doing. We are making tremendous progress, but like I've said before, now is not the time to take our foot off the gas. If you remember, I said earlier this month, what we do together over the next three weeks will greatly determine our outcome of what we can do after April 30th. That's still so true today. We need to continue with social distancing and washing our hands frequently and limiting our trip to the grocery store and the pharmacy. So because we are fighting the curve, we are working on plans to reopen our state. But let me be clear, we're not out of the woods yet. We have to continue to be responsible about our trips to the grocery store and the pharmacy by only sending one person and make sure we practice physical distancing while we're there. We've talked about how the models get better over time, like the hurricane models get better as they get closer to shore. Our models in Oklahoma are continuing to be revised and get better with more testing. We have over 80 test sites available all across the state. And let me be clear, we want everyone that has COVID-like symptoms of a fever of 100.4, shortness of breath, to get tested. You can call 211 or go to coronavirus.health Dot ok dot gov to find a location near you. <clears throat> I wanted to show the initial IHME model. Uh, this came out in late March, and it's probably up on your screen right now. It's the one the White House referenced, and it showed a peak of approximately 5,000 hospital beds uh, needed in the state of Oklahoma. On April 1st, we continued with uh, my safer at home order for the vulnerable population, as well as we extended our non-essential business uh, ban all the way through all 77 counties. You'll see the graph on April 1st came down to a little bit uh, around 3,000 beds uh, needed in the state of Oklahoma. And, and then that last version on April 8th, uh, is the version we showed you last week when we announced our hospital surge plans. That version projected our peak hospital demand 
uh, on April 23rd at 1,115 hospital beds needed. We currently have four times the available beds in the state of Oklahoma. The latest graph uh, pushes our peak back to April 30th and also continued to flatten and showed a max bed of 815 uh, needed in the state of Oklahoma. Even under the model's worst case scenarios, Oklahomans, we are in fantastic shape on hospital beds. This graph also shows our total hospitalizations. Uh, these are people in the hospital in the ICU is the very bottom uh, piece of that graph. Those are the actual numbers uh, today. We have about 420 or so in the hospital across the state of Oklahoma. That number, the significance of that number, it stayed flat for the last 17 days. Our Uh, so just a little bit longer, I want everybody to stay home, stay safe, and stay strong. God bless you, and God bless the great state of Oklahoma. say to those that were driving around the Capitol today frustrated because they're they're ready to go back to work what would you say to them um, that, are, that are feeling that way yes so I, I know that Oklahomans are frustrated ready to get uh, life back to normal um, it, that's you know our plan is to do it safely uh, my orders the executive orders are through April 30th we extended the safer at home for the vulnerable population through May 6th uh, but we are we're working on plans to open up. We'll have more things in the future. We're going to do it safely. I've met with the Restaurant Association. Our health department is working on a safe way that we can start opening those restaurants back up, our non-essential businesses. Uh, we started with uh, elective surgeries uh, in nine days uh, to get those uh, back up. We're going to monitor the data, and I'll continue to let Oklahomans know, but we have to continue the social distancing to make sure we don't have a, a uh, new surge. Uh, but we have to keep on this path uh, through April 30th. Governor, just again, you talked a little bit about antibody testing, and you believe that uh, our state is one of the leading states in that testing. We know there's some Norman, Norman firefighters that are doing some of this testing as well. Can you tell us what this means for some of our frontline workers or what it could potentially mean for them? Sure. Let me uh, have Dr. Schramm come up, and, and she's the expert on the antibody testing. Yes, yeah, so, so we have been working very closely uh, with lab um, in, in uh, Norman to develop antibody testing right here in the state. Um, what that tells a person who uh, takes that test is whether or not you have been exposed to the virus and developed an, an antibody or had an immune response to it. Um, it does not um, confer immunity, um, but it does, it does decrease the risk. Um, and understanding that you have been exposed and that you, you have had an immune response. I think that informs, we can use that in surveillance, and that informs us about what's going on in the population. Also, our frontline workers knowing whether they've been exposed at this point and developed some uh, form of immune response is important. Could it mean that those frontline workers who may have that immunity could be the ones that are dealing with these COVID patients, if that's the case? Well, we don't know how long, if you develop immunity, how long your immunity would last. So this is very early. I think it's good for, for us to know who has been exposed, who's been asymptomatic but had the virus. Um, but it, it does not designate people who are completely safe from the virus at this point in time. So we are going to be rolling out more of what we're doing and using that as a way to understand how the virus is moving in various populations. Uh, and you'll hear more about that soon. Uh, Governor, just your reaction to the letter from the House Democrats wanting you to uh, call grocery store workers and people in that area first responders. 
You know, we uh, we meet with uh, all the legislatures quite often, actually, right after, uh, at, I think, 4 o'clock today, I have another call with all legislators giving them an update. So we listen to all the advice from them. We've done a lot of things for our first responders uh, around the state, and uh, we're, looking at, we're looking at all that information. Our business community, uh, we've helped uh, the Commerce Department has really set up programs to help our business community, uh, our folks that have been hurt, our workers, and um, we, we passed a executive order to allow our first responders to be paid uh, if they for up to two weeks if they if they do uh, 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 contact uh, code 19 um, so we're, we're looking at all those things to help those first responders we have specifically addressed uh, the grocery store workers governor um, I think there was a potential breakfast this morning between you and the uh, pro tem of the Senate and the speaker of the house obviously uh, you know, you probably can't talk a lot about how that went, but uh, there was a lawsuit filed yesterday uh, regarding the equalization matter. Can you give us an update? Was it a good breakfast? Did you guys share some laughs? Did you find any common ground? What so, can you say? Uh, it's always a great breakfast when I can, when I can uh, have breakfast with the leadership of the House, the Senate. So, uh, um, you know, those are those are my friends, and I look at I think of all the House and Senate members are my friends. Um, you know, it's uh, it's disappointing. Uh, that, uh, you know, we're over here focused on saving lives, building up the hospital plans, uh, working on getting the economy back going, working on all those Oklahomans that have lost their job. And so uh, haven't focused much on the, on the budget at this point. We've really been diving into the COVID uh, stuff, and it's, uh, uh, that's, that's where my focus has been uh, today and really for the last 30 days. Any thoughts on the lawsuit? Uh, it's, just, it's, it's, it's just disappointing. Dylan Richards, KOCO. Uh, thanks, Governor. I just had a question about your safer at home order. Is the only thing you're extending the, the safer at home for people over 65 and immunocompromised, or does that include business closures as well as uh, gatherings of 10 or more? And if not, why not? So every, every executive order uh, is expiring on April 30th. The only one that we've extended at this point is the safer at home through May 6th for the most vulnerable population. Um, the immune compromised. The, uh, the others, we're going to be looking at those over the next two weeks, to find out how we can safely reopen. Um, we're also looking at the CC guidelines. Uh, President Trump will be issuing some more guidance. Uh, I'm on the phone constantly with uh, governors around our region on what they're doing, how they're going to safely reopen uh, their states back up. Uh, but at this point, the only one that we've extended was the safer at home for the vulnerable population uh, through May 6th. And uh, the others that we're taking those day by day, I actually moved back uh, the elective surgeries from April 30th. That's going to be moved back to uh, April 24th. Steele, Oklahoma. Uh, Governor, what metrics are you using when you look at to reopen the economy, or is it you mentioned hospitalization? Is that the main metric you're going to be using? Also, what do you mean by reopening the economy? So the uh, the main the main metric is uh, hospitalizations, ICUs. Uh, those are the those are the things that we're watching, that we're flatlining, uh, that we're looking at that curve, uh, making sure that those, we don't have a spot back up. Uh, so yes, those are the main one ones we're looking at. Um, and when we say opening back up the economy, we're talking about non-essential businesses that have closed down. So you're talking about restaurants, um, you know, barber shops, um, you know, eventually museums, eventually all those uh, social gathering businesses. Um, so the the first one was the elective surgeries. The plans are being worked on. How do we safely do that? We've got the health department working on those. Do we need to test all of the uh, uh, workers at a restaurant? Um, do they mask up? Uh, do we spread the tables apart, six feet apart? All those things we're working on to uh, slowly step back in uh, to more normal, uh, normal uh, business life. Butler, KTUL. Hi, Governor. Uh, so right now, there's you know I'm sure a lot of people, people are around the capital. Happy to see that you're talking about reopening the economy. On the flip side, you've got a fair number of people out there that might say this is premature and we're just, you know, kind of tempting fate away, kind of waiting to see if this will spike back up again. Uh, what would be your response to, to those people? 
Well, we're doing this uh, with, uh, with the guidance of the experts at our health department. We're also uh, being data-driven. From the very beginning, I said we're going to be based in decisions in Oklahoma based on what's happening in Oklahoma, the data that we're seeing, uh, not what's happening in, in a different state or a different city or what the news might be saying. And over the last 17 days, our hospitalization has been continuing on a, uh, a slow decline, which is a great thing. Uh, but I also want Oklahomans to know we've got to continue social distancing. We've got to continue the, uh, the policies that we have in place through April 30th. We're going to monitor this data day and night to make sure that nothing spikes and no trends go the different direction, uh, because that would be the last thing we would want is to slowly start opening things back up uh, post April 30th. And, uh, and, and we see some kind of different, uh, some kind of spy. So it's still important uh, that we continue everything. We're also, uh, we can't really get out in front of the CDC or what, uh, what the uh, White House is recommending. So we're gonna continue to wait and get some guidance from them as well over the next couple of weeks. Governor, can I just ask you about hospitalizations? You said, quote, over the last 17 days, our hospitalizations uh, have, have been continuing on a slow decline, which is a great thing. Are you referring to people leaving the hospital? Because the cumulative numbers continue to go up. If we just go back to April 10th, we've got an increase of 18, an increase of 17, an increase of 4, an increase of 31, and then uh, most recently today, that would be, I'm bad at math, 22 new folks coming in. Are there people leaving the hospital, and that's what you're referring to? Because it looks like we're still getting you know, a couple dozen, a dozen to a couple dozen people a day entering the hospital with COVID. When we look at the net number in the hospital, both ICU and the, the net number of the hospitalizations across the state. So, of course, you've got people coming in and you've got people exiting the hospital. That overall number in the hospitals is what we track on a daily basis from all across the state. That number peaked at 560 on March 30th, and it's slowly gone down. Uh, I'll be getting a briefing tonight of exactly where it is today. It was. I think 420 or so yesterday across the state. That's the numbers that we're uh, we're tracking. Those aren't on the website, to my knowledge. If we get those emailed, that would help provide that accurately. Perfect. We'll we'll, we'll, wrong. we'll get that to you. Thank you. Barbara Tulsa World. Uh, Governor, do you have any plans to call a meeting of the Board of Equalization? Uh, Barbara, we are, we are working on that. That's part of the budget discussions that we're working on with the, with the House and the Senate. Uh, it was my intent to fully fund April, May, and June, which we have a budget shortfall for the 2020 budget. And uh, we've got plenty of time. We fully funded uh, April, and we've got all the way till May to call a Board of Equalization meeting and work out agreement uh, with, the, with the House and the Senate. And it's been my, my objective all along um, to make sure that we protect core services over the long haul. And the unfortunate thing is Oklahomans are hurting right now, and we have budget shortfall for the last three months of this year, uh, but that doesn't end next year either or the year after that. Uh, oil is, is down, uh, Oklahomans are struggling, and we've got to be very thoughtful of how we roll this out and we use our savings over the next three years. And my job as governor is to continue to uh, let Oklahomans know that and also uh, uh, you know, work with the legislature to come up with a great budget that protects core services over the next three years. Uh, this one might be more for Dr. Shrum, but uh, on the total uh, death toll from COVID-19, there was a, some added that were from the 3rd to the 13th. Just curious to why the delay of those were. That, does that just confirm that they did die from COVID-19? Actually, Secretary uh, Lothry can answer that one. Thank you. You have seen a slight difference in how we've reported uh, the deaths. Uh, that's evolving, so our commitment is to absolute transparency on this. And so one tweak we made to the data is to try to get these in the right periods. Uh, if you imagine, for instance, a death that might happen in a rural area, uh, we, we don't have uh, an immediate notification that that a deceased person might have died, for instance, from COVID. That simply takes a little bit of time. And so we've been aggregating those as we go. And so what we've tried to do is true up according to the actual period. So again, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to get it within a 24 hour period. That's not how we receive the data, but we've tried to put those in a correct periods. And so that's an that's adjustment we've made and we'll keep that uh, cadence going forward. Secretary, maybe you can answer this as well. There's been some discussion and governor, obviously if you would like to, but there's been some discussion and question about uh, what the medical examiner's office might want to do in terms of post-mortem testing 
Can you give us the latest that you can talk to about that? Sure, I'll actually defer to uh, Dr. Shum as to the protocol on that. Uh, I believe she worked on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, yes, we, we have had conversations with the medical examiner. Um, they can do uh, post-mortem testing, um, and, and those specimens can be collected and frozen until uh, another time. Uh, we, are, we are trying to strike a balance between um, having testing available to, to people who are hospitalized and, and working to allocate um, testing uh, materials and swabs for the medical examiner to be able to do that. Do, is there a recommendation on... You know, I spoke with a, a woman whose story was up there, uh, and, and now she thinks that her son did die from something else. Uh, but at the time, she was really unsure. She didn't know whether she should go get tested. She didn't know whether people or something contacted you. So do you have a recommendation for anybody who experiences a loss of life in their family? Well, depending upon the circumstances, whether someone has underlying conditions that could account for their death versus, an, you know, a suspicious death or... Um, someone that we anticipate need, we need to find out the COVID status. Um, it, it all depends on, you know, those circumstances, whether or not someone would receive an autopsy at the time. And so um, I, I think that that is something to be communicated with, um, you know, if someone loses a loved one and, and decisions be made on a, you know, individual basis based on the actual condition of the patient and their underlying conditions. Thank you. Quinton Chandler, State Impact of Oklahoma. Yes, thank you, Governor. Are you planning to uh, push for prison releases uh, right now? And also, uh, do your emergency powers give you more options in terms of prison releases? You know, any, any uh, prison release would just go through the normal process through the Pardon and Parole Board. Um, you know, November 1st, we had the commutation, and some of those are still trickling through the Pardon and Parole Board. So we have regular meetings with them. Uh, our legal team reviews all those. They put those on my desk. Uh, but we're, there, there's no difference or change because of COVID-19 uh, in, the, in, in the release, the commutation, the pardons of anybody in Oklahoma. Public safety is number one, and, uh, and, and, and there's, been, there's been no change because of COVID-19. Kim Miller. Okay, I'm unmuted. Uh, apologies. Thank you, Governor. Uh, some in the medical field, uh, health uh, officials, are indicating concerns of a second wave of this virus starting this fall and winter. Uh, what, what sort of preparations, thinking uh, obviously months and months ahead here, but how concerned are you of a second wave of this virus later this year, and, and what sort of preparations have you considered? Well, that's always, uh, the second wave is always a possibility. You look at other outbreaks that have happened over the history, and, and sometimes they come back stronger in the, in the fall. And so that's something that we're obviously concerned about, and we're going to monitor. Uh, we're going to keep these plans in place uh, at the hospital. Uh, right now, my, my focus is continuing to see that curve flatten, continuing to remind Oklahomans what we can do to social distance, wash our hands, staying safe. Um, so we'll monitor that, and uh, that's a long ways away. And as, as you notice from the curve, uh, uh, you know, that we were planning on in, in March, it obviously was flattened, and, uh, and that's a great thing. And so we will continue to monitor that as we get uh, through the summer and, uh, and into the fall. Thank you.